Hello viewers. Got a bit of a sore throat today. I had a question recently from a viewer asking me about oil pressure in his Jeep. But the question was is I'm I'm having a problem with oil pressure and I've replaced the oil pump, I've replaced the pickup tube, I've replaced a bunch of stuff and I'm still having the same problem. So I decided to make this video on basically how oil pressure works. Now you need to understand something about oil pressure, or oil pumps in general. Oil pumps move volume. They do not create pressure, okay? That's something you need to just get out of your mind. Oil pumps do not create pressure. What creates pressure is something on the outlet of the pump that restricts flow. And because of that flow restriction, how about this? How about we give you a nice little visual? If you took a garden hose, just turned it on, and the water just came running out, that water will be coming out at a given volume. Now, if you take your thumb and put it over the end of that hose, it comes spraying out with much greater force. You just created pressure. The same thing is true for oil pumps. Oil pumps do not create pressure. What creates pressure in an engine in its oil pump is the clearances between all the metal parts. In particular, the bearings, uh, normally down at the connecting rods and the uh, main bearings. Uh, this is where pressure is created. Also, there's a little spring on the outlet of some pumps that, that help with this, but what I told this person with the oil pressure problem was that the reason why you don't have the oil pressure that you're looking for is because your engine's worn out, and that's plain and simple. So what happens is, is that oil comes, you know, rushing to those spaces in between those metal parts, but those clearances are much larger than they would be normally. So it's as if you let your thumb off of that hose a little bit. So that pressure is decreased as a result. So if your engine's worn out, those clearances have exceeded their tolerance. As a result, oil pressure will drop. Instead of me talking about this, why don't I show you? Because right next to me here, I have this 1.8 liter Integra engine with 300 some thousand miles on it. This is where the pickup is. So the oil gets sucked up in here and goes into the oil pump assembly, which is driven by the crankshaft. So pretty much this block right here is your oil pump. And the outlet goes into, there's gonna be a uh, passageway in these uh, main bearings. And then this piece of metal in here is the main bearing. And you know, honestly, for 300,000 miles, I don't think it's too bad. Uh, it has been sitting for a while, which is probably why you see that discoloration there. What happens is, is there's going to be a thin layer of oil between this and this, which is the crankshaft here. You can see that's what spins. So there's a, a thin layer of oil that is supposed to make it so that these metal parts never really touch. Liquids are not compressible. Uh, as far as oil is concerned inside of your engine, what happens is, is there's that thin layer of oil that rides between here and the actual journal itself so that the journal can spin. If that leaves for whatever reason, like say your car gets run low on oil, or say uh, you use the incorrect type of oil, that oil will come rushing out of here and these metal parts will start touching each other. Once that happens, that's it, game over. It accelerates the wear on everything. The same is true for your connecting rods. This is the bottom of the connecting rod bearing here. Oh, and good. Uh, in fact, the, the bearing got left on the journal here. Come on. There we go. Wow, look at that pitting. Yeah, so you can see that this bearing, after a period of time, has gotten a little pitted. So it'd be a good idea to replace this. But this hole here is where the oil will come through on this journal because there's actually oil that is sent through the crankshaft via these journals. There's holes. Oh, there's the hole. Here's where the magic happens. These holes. This is the crankshaft here. This is the main bearing. This is a rod bearing, connecting rod. So this is the connecting rod right here. Oil from the oil pump 
is sent through the connecting rods or, or through the main journals into the crankshaft itself and then to the connecting rods. The clearances between the connecting rods bearings in their journals and the main bearings in their journals are really what gives you your oil pressure. Once these clearances reach a certain point, then you're no longer going to have oil pressure no matter how many new oil pumps you put on it. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you've got low or no oil pressure, in other words, the light on the dash is there or it flashes, particularly if it's flashing and you hear a knocking noise, shut it off as soon as possible and check the oil level. If the oil level is okay and you want to know what to do next, well, quite simply, is to hook an oil pressure gauge up. These go in where the sending unit is. So if you have an oil actual gauge, you disconnect the sending unit for the gauge and you plug this into its place. Most of you out there probably have the quote unquote idiot light, uh, in which case you would remove that sending unit and screw this in and observe the oil pressure uh, for that particular engine. Now there's a gajillion different engines out there, so exactly what pressure you should have, it's hard to say, but note that the pressure will increase with RPM and should be steady. Needles shouldn't be going all over the place like this. I mean, it's okay if it's like a little bit like this, but if the needle's doing a lot of movement and going around, that means that somewhere it's leaking out. Uh, there, there is spring pressure that they use to go against that volume of oil that comes out of the oil pump itself that also comes into play. There's a whole lot of different designs out there and they do a lot of different things, but it's not the pump that creates pressure. It's the resistance to the outlet of that pump that gives you oil pressure. That's what I want you to walk away with. Some of you out there are going to have lots of input on this. Feel free to make your comments below. And uh, if you're watching this and you're curious, look at some of those comments because oftentimes there are some very good ones that show up down there. Uh, but for the most part, don't vilify me for this. Uh, I'm basically just whoa. <laughs> I'm basically just trying to convey to you that uh, oil pressure is not created by pumps. Oil pressure is created by resistance to the outlet volume of that pump. That's the whole reason I made this video. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can. Uh, Visit me on Facebook or Twitter. What else can you do? Oh, you can watch me on video, like here, and some junk. And, uh, you know, send me comments. Visit my website, ericthecarguy.com. Uh, all kinds of fun things you can do to hang out with Eric the Car Guy if you're meeting me for the first time. And by the way, good to meet you. And those of you who have come back, love you guys. I have some of the greatest supporters out there. I'm very fortunate, so thank you. Thank you all for that. And what do I usually say? Oh, yeah, I'm Eric the Car Guy, and uh, stay dirty. See ya.